Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Washington Redskins 2019 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Now, with all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the first pick of the draft for the Washington Redskins and Dwayne Haskins, quarterback out of Ohio State. When you look at his high school production score, he had a 56.70 high school score and a 96.43 FBS stat score. Looking at all the data since uh, 19, uh, 90, uh, 1958 in terms of the FBS score and 2007 in terms of the high school score, he pretty much hits all the areas you're looking for in terms of starting quarterback potential with the exception of the Pro Bowl quarterback threshold for high school data where he didn't hit an 84 or higher, but he did hit at least a starter area in terms of his high school production. And when you look at the career FBS score, he had a 96.43, which pretty much hits all the thresholds for all pro, pro bowl, and starter potential. And when you look at the averages, he's definitely above all those. The only real issue with Dwayne Haskins is that he only has one full season of FBS experience. There's, there's been very few quarterbacks who only had one year worth of success as a starter in the FBS to become a long-term starting quarterback or better. Um, a few examples of that, Cam Newton is one of those. There's also a couple quarterbacks in the 70s. But it's just not something that happens that often. So that's the only real thing that kind of hurts Dwayne Haskins is that you don't know if he's a one-hit uh, one wonder. Um, and he's just very, very young. So he's very young, very inexperienced. He's someone that would be kind of surprising if he's really great out the gate. So I do expect him to show flashes this year. But I do think that he's someone that you shouldn't expect big things from him until a couple years down the line once he gets more experience and once he gets more you know, um, knowledge and experience under his belt because he is definitely a very, very inexperienced quarterback based on his college production. Uh, then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, Montez Sweat uh, out of uh, Mississippi State. When you look at his production data, he had a 76.41 solo tackle score, 79.32 sack score, and a 67.86 tackle for loss score. Doesn't hit all the all-pro thresholds, but does hit all the Pro Bowl thresholds at the position. And when you look at the averages, He's closer to the Pro Bowl average than he is the All-Pro average in terms of his overall data. But it's still a good overall production profile. And when you look at his athleticism traits, he had a 78.50 explosion score, 99.80 speed score, and a 95.25 flexibility score. Hits all the All-Pro thresholds, Pro Bowl thresholds, and starter thresholds at the position and definitely is within All-Pro averages in terms of his athleticism traits to Pro Bowl averages in terms of his athleticism traits. I think when you look at Montez Sweat, you're looking at a guy that has Pro Bowl production with all pro and Pro Bowl athleticism traits. He's going to be good. The question is how good he's going to be. And I would say he has a chance to be a very, very good edge rusher, but he's not someone, again, that I think you should expect to become a perennial all pro or Hall of Fame type guy. So Hall of Fame is definitely not most likely with him, but definitely very, very good outcomes in terms of like Pro Bowl potential, etc with him so good profile overall then of course we get to the next pick and terry mclaurin wide receiver out of ohio state when you look at his production data 18.79 in terms of passing yardage mark share production he doesn't hit the five-time all pro three-time all pro three-time pro bowl or long-term starter area and when you look at the averages at the position woefully below what the average is for all pro player pro bowl player and starter player um the bottom line with terry mclaurin is there are very very few long-term starters with as low of a market share production score as him since the 1958 nfl draft class he does have good athleticism traits though 89.16 in terms of explosion 97.44 in terms of speed and 88.10 in terms of flexibility for his size i think the chances of him becoming a very good special teams player are very much in the cards for him but it's still a troubling troubling lack of production that i think will kind of harm him in the future so Special teams is definitely something I think is, is very good for him, but if he becomes a perennial pro bowler or a really great long-term starter, it would be very, very surprising based on his production data coming out. Then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft and Bryce Love running back out of uh, Stanford. When you look at his production data, he had a 93.45 market share production score, hits the all-pro threshold, five-time pro bowl threshold, and three-time pro bowl threshold. Uh, when you look at the averages, he hits above the average all-pro score, average pro bowl score, and average starter score. No athleticism testing for him, however, um, because he didn't do any testing during the pro, the uh, the uh, uh, the 
pro day areas. So there's not a lot to really say about his athleticism, but good production marks. He's someone that I think could be like Deion Lewis very much so, because Deion Lewis was another guy that was same level of production, undersized, you know, not the biggest running back ever, and went on to become a very good player a little bit down the line. So I think that's pretty much Bryce Love. So I'd say best case scenario, he could become a Deion Lewis-like running back, you know, someone that doesn't really catch on early, but definitely does down the line. Or he could also be an instant impact guy as well. You know, if he's fully healthy as when the season starts, I think Bryce Love could easily become the starting running back for the Washington Redskins, which is saying something because they have a lot of talent on the team. So we'll see what happens with him, but he's definitely someone that was one of the more questionable cases this year because he was someone that going into the year was the top running back based on production data. And then as the year ended, it became less likely that he would maintain that status due to all the injuries and stuff. So... If he's healthy, he'll be great. If he's not healthy, then he's just someone that I think is just going to be more of a backup slash reserve guy. Then, of course, we get to the next pick for them, of course, uh, in Wes Martin out of Indiana. I mean, you look at his athleticism traits, 88.50 in terms of explosion, 33.78 in terms of speed, and 68.64 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, pro-bowl threshold, but does hit the starter threshold. And when you look at the averages, his speed score is woefully below with the all-pro average, Pro Bowl average, and starter averages, but I still think this is a good profile. Wes Martin has the profile of a ZBS guard, and I think there's nothing really holding him back from reaching that level of, of success. So I'm very, very excited to see what happens to him because he's very explosive, very flexible, and those are traits that work really well in terms of being a ZBS or a zone blocking scheme type guard. Then, of course, we get to Ross uh, Perschbacher out of Alabama. When you look at his athleticism traits, 9.80 in terms of explosion, 67.90 in terms of speed, and 63.90 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, hits the speed marks and flexibility marks of an all-pro and pro bowl guard, but doesn't have the explosion traits of one, but does have one of a starter though. And when you look at the averages, his, his explosion traits are woefully below what the averages for all-pro uh, uh, guard, pro bowl guard, and starter guard. So those are the biggest sort of question marks with Ross is just his explosion traits um, still has a good chance to become a starter I would say that's the best sort of case scenario with him but definitely not the best overall athleticism profile when you look at it in in the total like picture uh, then of course we get to Cole Holcomb out of North Carolina uh, linebacker when you look at his production 76.72 in terms of solo tackle data doesn't hit the all pro threshold does hit close to the pro bowl threshold and definitely hits above the starter threshold doesn't hit the all-pro average or pro bowl average, but does hit close to the starter average of 79.20. Um, not a lot of athleticism traits to really say about him, but definitely has enough production traits that he could end up becoming like a long-term starter. And of course, we get to Kelvin Harmon, wide receiver out of NC State. When you look at his production data, 73.94 in terms of passing yards, mark share of production. Uh, doesn't hit the five-time all-pro, three-time all-pro, but does hit above the three-time pro bowl area and hits above the long-term starter area. Based on the averages, he's below the all-pro average, pro bowl average, and starter average. And when you look at athleticism traits, 59.30 in terms of explosion, 56.44 in terms of speed, and 48.82 in terms of speed, uh, in terms of flexibility for his size, does have at least 154 or higher athleticism trait, but he's definitely below all the averages for all-pro, pro bowl, and starter wide receiver. So I would say Kelvin Harmon does have a chance to become a long-term starting wide receiver, but his overall athleticism is troublesome, to, to uh, say the least, uh, based on his overall data. Uh, then, of course, we get to Jimmy Moreland, uh, cornerback out of uh, James Madison. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, 53.30 in terms of uh, solo tackle data and 87.17 in terms of pass deflection data. His solo tackle data doesn't hit all the areas he needs to hit in terms of off-road potential, uh, but his pass deflection data does hit all the areas that you're looking for. Um, the only sort of question mark is his level of competition. You know, he played against, you know, lesser competition, so there's question marks there. But I would say at the very least, you could end up becoming, you know, getting a long-term starter here. So Jimmy Warland is someone that I think, based on his production data, you should eye as a, a guy that maybe starts out as sort of a reserve or backup cornerback, but could develop into a starter down the line. So definitely a good sort of profile here. And then, of course, we get to Jordan uh, Brailford. Defensive end slash edge out of Oklahoma State. When you look at his production data, 64.19 in terms of solo tackle data, 64.56 in terms of sack data, and 71.44 in terms of tackle for loss data. Doesn't hit all the all-pro thresholds you're looking for, but does hit all the Pro Bowl thresholds at the position. Uh, and when you look at the averages, it's closer to the Pro Bowl averages than the all-pro averages. 
Um, based on athleticism, there isn't a whole lot to say about him, but he does have good production traits, and I would be, and I, I would say there is a chance he can become a long-term starter um, based on his overall data profile. Uh, so overall, when you look at the Washington Redskins draft class, I would say this is a pretty decent draft class. I think you got a quarterback who can become a long-term starter. You've got a lot of guard prospects that have a chance to become you know, long-term starters. Uh, the, the picks that were in day three, all those picks have a good shot to become starters to really good backups, you know, based on their overall data. So I would say this is a pretty solid class. And of course, Montez Sweat is, has the potential to be a, you know, a top five to top 10 edge rusher at the NFL level um, if he, you know, puts it all together. So uh, at the very least. So I would say that this is a very good draft class for the Washington Redskins. I think they really did well. Uh, throughout the draft there definitely were some misses here and there don't get me wrong every draft has some misses based on data but i do think there's a lot of really strong picks in this class so i'm very excited to see what happens with them and i think this is a very very good solid draft compared to all the other draft classes so you know well done washington and of course uh, my name is james coburn you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com you can also follow me on twitter at geometrics and if you like this content and you want more content like this be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.